Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about top 5 best mirrorless cameras. Starting at number 5. Panasonic Lumix S5 II. A worthy successor to one of our favorite video cameras, the Panasonic Lumix S5 II improves on the S5's excellent precedent. Wieldy like its predecessor, we found it sturdy yet comfortable to handle during testing. Happily, its compact design doesn't compromise the physical controls. Like the S5, the S5 II is ticketed as a hybrid, but video is where it excels. In our tests, we found its 6K 30P footage rich and detailed, with wide dynamic range. Its video chops are bolstered by 10-bit recording across almost all resolutions, plus the ability to record uncropped footage using the sensor's full 3 to 2 aspect ratio, useful for cropping content. The S5 II is Panasonic's first mirrorless camera with phase detection AF for video. Combined with highly effective image stabilization, we found it produces sharp, stable video even when shooting handheld, although the 1.5x crop on 4K 60p video is a shame. It's no slouch for stills either, contrast detection AF proved rapid and reliable, and the S5 II demonstrated excellent noise control. Serious videographers will be drawn by the Lumix S5 IIX, while the Canon EOS R6 II offers more advanced subject detection. Nevertheless, the S5 II is a fantastic hybrid for high-quality video. Coming at number 4. Fujifilm X-S20. Taking all that made the X-S10 one of our favorite mirrorless hybrids, the Fujifilm X-S20 adds beginner-friendly features while still satisfying advanced users. Adopting the balanced body of the X-S10, it handles comfortably. Our first impressions found that simplified dials make it easier for learners to operate. A new vlog mode, plus automatic scene detection and better subject tracking, also eases the way for beginners. By inheriting the 26.1 MP X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor from the X-S10 and X-T4, the X-S20 benefits from a proven imaging system, while Fuji's latest X-Processor 5 works efficiently with the bigger battery to extend longevity. The X-S20 enhances things further by offering 6K 30P 4.2.2 10-bit internal video recording, which is more than most casual content creators will need. We think many beginners will be wary of its increased price tag, with the XS10 still available for less. We also wish that Fuji had weather-sealed the XS20. All the same, with a generous feature set, including in-body image stabilization that worked well for handheld shooting in our review, the result is a very capable all-rounder for both stills and video. At number 3. Nikon Z6 II. For a long time, the full-frame Nikon Z6 reigned as our number one camera. This successor remains an excellent performer, particularly for those looking to upgrade from Nikon DSLRs, but the Z6II's modest updates mean it's fallen slightly behind the very best mirrorless cameras. It still comes highly recommended, though, thanks to its consistency in most areas, with the addition of a second XP6 processor bringing a range of performance improvements that include a new 14 frames per second burst shooting speed. In our tests, we found the autofocus to be a significant improvement on the Nikon Z6, particularly with animal eye-slash-face detection, and the Z6 II adds a much-needed UHS-2 SD card slot alongside the existing XQD-slash-CFexpress slot. Video does now lag slightly behind hybrid rivals like the Sony A7 IV. But with a tried and tested 24MP full-frame BSI CMOS sensor, which delivers very good high ISO performance, and the best handling around, it fully deserves its place at the top table for photographers. Number 2 of my list. Canon EOS R7. The Canon EOS R7 is like one of the camera giant's full-frame EOS R cameras, only with a smaller APS-C sensor. For the price, it's impressively powerful, particularly if you're a fan of shooting wildlife or sports scenes. That's because it boasts 15 frames per second burst speeds, or 30 frames per second if you switch to the electronic shutter. 
Our tests found that the EOS R7 can indeed hit these speeds, though you don't get the deep buffers found on full-frame siblings like the EOS R6, so it can't sustain those speeds for quite as long. Beyond rattling off frames of speeding animals, the EOS R7 offers comfortable handling, Canon's latest subject tracking autofocus system and, and dual UHS-2 card slots, making it a camera that will also tempt Pro EOS R series fans as a second body. The only downside? Canon has so far only made two native lenses for the EOS R7's APS-C sensor. More should be en route, though, and you can always mount existing RF lenses or adapt older EF lenses from Canon's DSLRs while you wait. And number 1. Sony A7 IV. The Sony A7 IV is a truly modern hybrid camera. It's overkill for beginners and more expensive than its stills-focused competition, but it's also a versatile workhorse for anyone who want to shoot a mixture of photos and video. A price bump means it no longer occupies the same entry-level price bracket as its popular predecessor, but upgrades like 10-bit video and a Bion's XR processor make it a much more powerful option. In our tests, we found the A7 IV to have class-leading autofocus skills, plus a seemingly endless buffer depth, which means the camera can almost indefinitely maintain its maximum burst speeds without any slowdown. When using a CFX Express card, it swallowed 9 frames per second for over a minute, or 6 to 7 frames per second when continuously shooting raw. The A7 IV's new 33MP full-frame sensor doesn't dramatically improve image quality over the A7 III, the higher resolution also means fairly prevalent noise above ISO 6400, and there's a heavy crop on 4K footage. But as a complete package, the Sony A7 IV is a solid all-rounder which could be the only mirrorless camera you'll ever need. Check out this video description for latest price and more informations. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned.